guys, thanks for tuning in. Chris Tran for Guns and Tactics Magazine here at TriggerCon 2017 at the Tacoma Convention Center in Tacoma, Washington. Here at the Strike Industries booth with Josh. Josh, how you doing, man? Hey, how are you doing? Really well. It's good to see you. Glad yeah, we're here. Thanks. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Strike Industries is kind of like the mad scientist company that's always coming up with something new and innovative, yeah. so we wanted to make sure we stopped by. Um, I was hoping we could talk first about the new Viper PDW stock. Uh, Garrett actually just sent me one of these. Just put it so in you're, on. you're the lucky guy. I'm the lucky guy, exactly. Go. So I'm really looking forward to this. This thing yeah. uh, is, in a word, robust. I was very, very impressed with the build quality on it, but I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about some of the specs behind it, the, the design philosophy behind it, just so Absolutely. the consumers know what we're looking at. Absolutely. So the entire idea of a PDW is to have a small, usable package that, once deployed, can be effective at range. Right. So what we've seen from the industry was the development of PDWs become better and better and to work for many applications. What we didn't see was the ability to stay in the same firing position without a change. Mm -hmm. And what that is is if we're in firing position, I don't want to have to come off gun and have to actuate my stop. So instead, the answer for us was just to spring actuate. And that makes it sound a lot more simple than it was. Uh, I think if you remember the SHOT Show for a couple of years, we've been showing the stock. Uh, what we really wanted to do was, like you said, make the robust quality that we're known for. Yeah. We didn't want to take any shortcuts. It just wasn't available for us to do that. It, it would have shortcut and given the end user a product that was a compromise on a dynamic weapon system, and that's never okay. Right. right. So one of the things that we really worked on doing uh, was beefing up the actual spring system. So it's a patented internal sprung system. This is unique in our industry. And what we wanted to do was make it something that can't be compromised by dirt, by dust, by any of those elements that can get into it. Right, right. So we went into teeny. And I think we were talking just a just second ago. Just a little ago, bit off camera, yeah, uh, yeah. So 18 <laughs> months of, of firing prototypes, of beating and abusing this thing. And I think you'll see some of our video out on our website and our YouTube and our Instagram and Instagram and Instagram, Instagram and Instagram tube, yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, about how much that we did with it. That's firing suppressed, that's firing multiple calibers. I think right now we've ramped up 223, 556, 9 mil, uh, 762 by 39, 300 blackout, nice. suppressed 556, suppressed 300 blackout. Yeah. And it's handled all of those. Now, the interesting part about that is in this system, we've used just our back end. Right. So what one of the things that we also notice from other PDWs is that people are selling you a PDW stock, and that's outstanding, but then you also have to buy their proprietary other parts. Mm -hmm. For me, that doesn't make sense. The solution system has to answer something, and the answer was, I want a PDW stock. I don't want you to sell me a mortgage or to sell me a car with it. Right. Uh, and that's not to denigrate, it was just an evolution of we had to take and develop the system to be able to use a standard BCG. Excellent. So you buy my back end at an MSRP of 275. Pretty good. Yeah, it's ridiculous. The back end comes with the actual PDW stock, our buffer, and our flat wound spring. Right. This is actually what funded our flat wound spring technology that we're using and that we're selling AR-10 and AR-15 flat wounds. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to get the correct spring rate and the correct tension in this small package. And even though it kind of looks a little bit larger, it does have removal cheek piece. Mm -hmm. So if you look at most of the videos people have asked us already on Instagram, we're shooting it without the cheek piece because we just didn't have the samples up and correct it. Right. So once we did get these, you shoot it with or without. Uh, my preference is without. Other guys in the company like to shoot it with, get a little bit of more of a cheek weld. Yeah. yeah. It works, it works. And that's one of the things that I really like about this is that, you know, it, it, so I've seen probably like three or four different companies are coming out with a PDW stop. That was kind of like right. the cool kid thing to do for a little while there. And then people started worrying about tax stamps and then, you know, proprietary parts. And that was a big reason why I never went out and spent my own money right. to go out and get one. So it's like I, I need the stuff that I have to work to work. Right. without the specialty stuff. So I love the fact that I can still use my normal BCG on a build that I might already have and just throw this in. Incredible MSRP. Yeah, um, incredible build quality in this. And, and this is really what we're looking at right here from the get. I think it's a really, really smart idea. I can't wait to finish building mine out so I can hopefully get up to the level you guys have gotten to in it's terms a, of the, uh, it's the TM. Fun. Looking once, forward to it. Once you shoot this PDW stock, it is hard to go back to almost anything else. Right. And uh, that might sound like a, a tchotchke kind of line, uh, but I'm the one shooting it. Yeah, it's good. It's working. I get this it's stupid smile. Yeah, it's good. Awesome.
Well, I'm looking forward to that. What else do you guys have out that's new uh, here at Trigger yeah, Pounder? Yeah, well, we wanted you to show, so we had talked about it before, but we hadn't really come with a final product. So this is the final prototype, and it should be going live on the site quite soon okay. with the oppressor. So we were one of the first manufacturers of, a, of an OEM concussion reduction device. I, I know that company very well, yeah. Uh, it was terrific, mm -hmm. and I still run on a couple of my guns. Yep. Uh, what I will say is the MSRP was a little bit higher than we wanted it to okay. be. Mm -hmm. The system could be improved, and now coming forward, that's what we do. Right. We even look at our own products and say, how can we make it a little bit better? Mm -hmm. Why not revamp, why not do a version two or come up with something different? So the oppressor is a quick access, quick on, quick off. I'm tracking. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. It's right, right there. there. On and off, nice and easy. That works with, I believe, 90% of the muzzle brakes we've already sold. Really? So okay. if you already have our muzzle brakes, you don't have to buy another patented one. Got you it. don't have to have one system. It works on our muzzle brakes. Okay, so platform to platform, as long as it's coming out from strike in terms of your muzzle brakes, it's going to be on there. Got it. Uh, this rifle here actually does show quite a few. You guys have already seen the Sidewinder yep. sights. 45 flip up co-witness in the lower one-third for most optics. Very smart. Uh, what we do like about that, and we've been asked many times at this show specifically, interestingly enough, Funny. is if they work for left-handers. Yeah. Uh, we did actually think about that, and we etched both sides. So you just install the other way around, and your lefties can use it too. Now, with me, the devil-handed folks, yes. There you I go. Hear you. Excellent. Uh, new in prototyping is a universal protection for your micro-red dots. Mm -hmm. So steel mount, you already know this from our gum, our Glock Universal mount, yep, that we yep. actually have a patent on a pattern system mm -hmm. that fits 90% of the micro dots. Right. We just ported that over. And this is such a smart idea, man. That's such a great you idea. You know, our three gunners yep. are saying when they're dumping their gun into the barrel at the end of end of the stage, yeah. moving a transition, that they're wrecking a $700 RMR. Yeah. That just scares it's me. Right now, man. Can, I, can I give you an option? Can I yeah. give you something that's going to work and save you a heck of a lot of money? Right. Okay, let's do that. Now, these are out right now, yes? No, in prototyping. In that's prototyping, right. but it probably will be one of our quicker prototypes. What are you thinking about turnaround time? You know, we, we six months out, eight months out? Because that's say, something I'm definitely going to I will about. do, uh, I'm the conservative one, so I'll say six months. That's fair. And I think on the conservative side, that's doable. Outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding. I like it. I like it. That, what we got for today? Anything else you want to show? We got a couple seconds? Um, I'll give you one more. Uh, this it. one will take a while on product development, so I'm um, okay. starting the need and the demand before before we're anywhere close, sure. but there you go. All right, what do we got? So uh, we've decided that we're going to play with some magazines. Uh, the magazines are magazines are magazines, right? Steel GI magazines still work. Polymer magazines work. Our question was, why has nobody looked at the interface of the magazine and the firearm, and is there anything that we can do to change up that interface and the way that they work together as a synergistic system? Okay. So we have a couple features that we're not going to tell anybody about yet. Got it. And, and i, I got to kind of disagree with you a little bit because I yeah. don't think magazines are magazines are magazines. There's, there's a couple, obviously, major manufacturers yeah. that are out there that make, you know, industry standard, the military standard mags that are out there, right? We all know right. what they are. Um, I'm super picky about my gear, and I get sent a lot of magazines for T&E, yeah. and i got to say about 90% of them, garbage. Uh, they don't work. Yeah. Uh, they don't work under stress. They don't work under heat. They don't work under, uh, you know, weird, so weird I conditions. Guess so my question there, which I think you're going to have a pretty quick answer to, is do you think that's from a production standpoint or a lack of innovation standpoint? It's both. I think it's absolutely both. I think it's people are rushing to get stuff so out of the market, and I think it's people just aren't really thinking about how things work. The follow-up that is going to be, who tends to do very good production quality and groundbreaking innovation? Huh. Huh. Looks like we might have to come back and talk to you in a few months. I think so. All right. That's all the time we got, Chris, man. we appreciate you. We Likewise. love what you guys Likewise. do. Thanks so much for uh, taking the time. This is Chris Cran with Guns and Tactics here at TriggerCon 2017. Again, that's what TrueCon is really all about. We're trying to bring the best and the brightest and the most innovative products that are out there. So thank you again for taking the time. Thank you. We really hope uh, we get to take a look at what you got coming up soon. Check. Take care of yourself, bro. Thanks, bro. Thanks. All right. Back with you guys soon. Thanks again.